You say that people should be assessing what has been achieved during the first 100 days. What do you see as the main achievements? Well, uh, first of all, of course, uh, the restoration of our freedoms. And this is uh, most important, especially when you think a few months back that uh, we were probably stuck with uh, Marcos, the dictator. So uh, first and foremost, the return of our freedoms and uh, the return of uh, press freedom, of course. And um, we have um, also released uh, 500 political prisoners. And now uh, what we are aiming for is uh, seeking our economic freedom. Speaking of press freedom, you're currently coming in for a lot of criticism in the press, particularly here in Manila. Do you think perhaps that the Filipino people have been too impatient? I think so, but at the same time, I cannot blame them because, uh, you know, after 14 years of uh, Mr. Marcos's dictatorial uh, rule, people were just uh, hoping and expecting so much. But at the same time, I always remind them that I never promise miracles. And I always say that uh, because Mr. Marcos has uh, left our country in such uh, an economic crisis that it will need the help of all Filipinos uh, to finally tackle these problems. But do you believe that the Filipinos in the wake of Mr. Marcos are burying their differences or are they continuing to uh, fight amongst themselves? And in fact, of course, we see them on the streets regularly. This must concern you. Well, uh, we do have uh, Marcos's loyalists. Uh, They don't really... uh, worry me in the sense that uh, there is no central figure yet. I mean, of course, they think in terms of Mr. Marcos, but fortunately, he is uh, thousands of miles away. But um, I am worried about, uh, well, the insurgency uh, problem, and also because uh, they are waiting for a program of rehabilitation, but because I am presently burdened by a huge uh, debt, Uh, we are not able to push through with all of these programs of rehabilitation, but we have already decided that um, lands sequestered by the government or foreclosed by the government will be uh, uh, leased to uh, landless people, especially in the areas, in the poorest areas. You've said that you cannot wait forever to find a negotiated settlement to the insurgency problem. Is that a veiled threat that if there isn't quick progress, there might be some sort of military crackdown? Well, uh, you see, we have been waiting for a response from the national leadership, but uh, so far we have not gotten any. And in fact, some were telling me that perhaps The leadership is probably um, divided now. I really am not sure about that, but this is the report given back to me that maybe the delay is caused not so much uh, for not wanting uh, to negotiate with us, but perhaps uh, there is a divided leadership at the moment. But would you issue a warning to them that they must get their own house in order, that they must find uh, agree for a settlement with you, or you, you well, will have to act? What is very clear, and I have said this all along, that uh, we offer them peace, but if they will not accept peace, but instead fight the government, then we will have to uh, meet force with force. Stands to be in the cabinet, no? so I presume in the decision-making process you've had a good close look. The perception of a lot of people is the president makes mistakes. Because her advisors give her wrong advice. Why are you not blaming her advisors? Why are you blaming well, her? Well, uh, some people say that uh, a president is only as good as her advisors. That is assuming that she has no brain of her own or that she is completely incompetent. I would say that if a president is a good president, he would be at least have the ability to choose good advisors. And that is an essential uh, requisite of a good president, to, be, to surround himself or herself with good advisors. Okay. Today, the cabinet had a meeting in uh, Malacanang. They spent the whole meeting on the issue of graft and corruption. Apparently, the, go- the administration feels that something has to be done. This is part of what you raised as a yes, valid yes. issue. Now, the, well, I don't want to call them propagandists, but friends of the administration say that there is corruption, but it is not uh, at the top. It is at the <laughs> bottom. Uh, response. Please. I don't agree with that. I think uh-huh. that is palabas. Uh, I think this is public knowledge that graft and corruption is one of the greatest uh, failures 
of this uh, administration. This administration, and I was present when uh, Cory Aquino made that promise to the people that aalisin daw lamang niya, aalisin daw kapag siya inihalal ng bayan, hindi lamang ang gambling casinos, titigil daw niya ang graft and corruption. But uh, many people believe that uh, the graft and corruption during the first two years of uh, this Aquino administration matches the last years of uh, the past regime. When you were in the cabinet, uh, we're going to talk insurgency in a, uh, in a few minutes. When you were in the cabinet, were you aware of any counterinsurgency program being implemented by the administration? None, and that's the reason I resigned as foreign secretary. I wanted an all-out comprehensive anti-insurgency policy, and I was fighting for that. And that's and when uh, President Aquino ignored my my uh, importunings to to have such uh, policy. Uh, I, I resigned. Uh, that was after visiting all the military camps. And a good example of that is Quezon. And the best evidence or exhibit A of that, of how, how bad the peace and order situation is, and uh, is, is uh, Governor, uh, uh, one of your guests tonight, Edwin Governor Edwin Rodriguez, who was uh, kidnapped at the height of the campaign. So at the time when I was about to proclaim, he was not there. So much so that I asked for a postponement of the elections in Quezon. So you've, you've mentioned that there's no counterinsurgency program in the administration? None. In your incumbency as foreign secretary, there was no foreign policy? In my opinion, there was uh, no direction. Yet. Not from Malacanang. Well, at least in one area, the administration claims they've succeeded. The economic recovery. There is an <laughs> economic boom. They're on their I, way to improving. I don't think there is economic recovery yet. I disagree with that. Uh, Do you agree that uh, steps have been taken? to improve the economic picture? Well, there have been steps taken, but uh, it's not going into a definite direction. That is uh, one of my, uh, 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 that was one of the things I mentioned in the letter. Okay. Would you like to say a parting word? Well, I, I'd like to just address a very brief uh, appeal to our people, ang mga minamahal natin yung kababayan, lalo-lalo na yung mga nakikinig dyan sa kanilang mga bahay. Hindi ko na isasali yung mga nasa katungkulan, lalo na yung matataas ang katungkulan. At hindi ko din isasali yung mga nakikinabang sa administrasyon, itong current administration. Ang gusto ko sanang gawin ngayong gabi ay magtanong lamang ng tatlong tanong. Are you better off now than you were 30 months ago before this administration took over? Second, do you feel safer now in your homes and in the streets than you felt 30 months ago? And third, do you feel that there is less graft and corruption now? than there was during the last years of the previous regime. Well, while my ans your answer to these questions will decide whether my resignation was justified or not. While there is no, in my opinion, a, a response to the broken, to the promises that had been, not been fulfilled by President Aquino. Uh, President Aquino uh, behaves like a, in an innocent bystander, hoping that the uh, problems will simply solve themselves. I think it is time now to separate those who believe that the present or current administration is doing a wonderful job. They should join forces, fine. They should support President Aquino. But all those who believe that she is not doing a good job, that she is making a mess out of the present situation, should also join forces. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Bilin bilin ng kung kami si Scorpio sa akin ay pagpatuloy ang bakaan nuclear plant kung maaari. Sa pagkatay, I told her this is the solutions and meeting a country's energy demands and decreasing dependence on imported oil. Ngunit ay ayaw niyang tanggapin ang aking mong tayo. At uh, maalala daw ng taong bayan sa Marcos habang hindi dyan ang bataan ng Tlopan. Anong klaseng pag-iisip yan? Ay, yun ay pag-ihiganti. O na, hindamay sa buhay ng Pilipino. Ay, nga, tayo, balang araw, may ikita na yun. 20 years from now, back-stop ng Pilipinas.